Well, hey guys, Mike Festiva here. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, some of you subscribers, hey buddy, some of you subscribers have seen me do a lot of fabrication, build a lot of interesting things over the years on my channel. If you're new to it, I do a lot of fabrication on this channel. This table gets used a whole bunch. This is a Crossfire Pro CNC table. And uh, I've owned the original prior to this, and then I own this one. So between the two tables, I've had them for about a year and a quarter now. And I love the thing. It's one of the most used tools in my shop. But this video specifically, we're gonna go into more detail about the Crossfire Pro and cover some things about the original Crossfire CNC tables. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask questions on my videos about them, so we're gonna try to cover a lot of those things. If you're on the fence about possibly buying one of these things, you wanna know more, this video will help you out quite a bit. So let's get into the video, guys. So this is the Crossfire Pro CNC table. We'll get into this in just a moment. But first, I wanna talk about the original I used to own. So basically, this thing was a concept at the time, it was a pre-order when I bought the original. Pros on it are basically, it's super compact and it's on casters. So if you have a really small shop or you wanna just wheel it outside the door on a nice day and cut some parts and bring it back in, you can basically go for that. The original form with just a slatted table, no water table and not the XL version, which is a bigger table, sells for pretty cheap. I don't know if there's any other uh, commercially available CNC's on the market that even get close to that. So that is the pros on that. It's a super cheap way to get cutting CNC controls. And I don't know if you guys have seen it, but my articulating dump truck, I built majority of that on that table and it's quite capable. Now we're gonna get into the things I don't like about the original. We're gonna get into what I do like about the Pro. And the one thing I didn't like about the original, I knew it going into it, had no Z-axis height control. You had to adjust this knob and bring up and down the cutting head, which is all right for thinner metals, but when you start piercing thicker stuff, it really gets a lot of blowback in the consumables, so you can go through a lot more consumables that way. If your metal has a lot of warpage, you gotta take that into factor because it won't adjust along the metal for height. I bought, not only just the original table, but I bought the XL package, which is a bit bigger that costs more and the water table, which costs more. And it was a great table. I ended up selling it to a friend for a good price when I got this on order because um, the Z axis after running that original for six months, I figured it'd be well worth it. And this one has dual rails for the gantry, which makes it a lot nicer and more stable. It's one of the biggest factors in the upgrades on the Pro, other than just all the things I just mentioned, is the software it comes with. This is only available for the Pro. The original Langmuir table runs a Mach 3 sample pack and you're limited to 500 lines of code unless you buy Mach 3's software. And I did not like that software at all. There was not much controls you could do it after posting your G-code. This Spire control is far superior. It's something that Langmuir Systems developed and it works so well with this table. It's just trouble free. The original Mach 3, I'd had come out to it sometimes and started up and then also had my torch went fire and I have to go in through all the parameters and sometimes parameters would change on it. I did not like that. This one, I've had no glitches and issues for it. It just works every time. So I'm pretty happy about that. So basically the original Mach 3 on the original table was a different software company that made it and Langmuir just made their tables work around it. Uh, Mach 3 is basically a simple program that can work with most CNC equipment. And it was very generalized, but I didn't like the generalness. There was a lot of features that were on there that you wouldn't even apply to the table or that you could even use. And it just felt like it was just too much general of a program. What uh, Langmuir Systems did for the Pro Table is they made this fire control software specifically for this table and it works extremely well. Basically, when you first posted your original file to Mach 3 and you say your pierce time was off, you had to go back through and repost that file with a longer pierce time. On here, you can adjust your pierce time, you can adjust your cut speed, you can flip the program, you can scale it, you can make straight line cuts. You can do quite a bit with this thing, which is really nice. You have a lot more control over it and it's just super easy to zero everything out, control the table. It was designed for the table, so it works far better than some general program is. One other thing to note is the software is touchscreen capable. I really like that. It feels like you're operating more of a machine than a computer, but you can also run a mouse and you can do some of the key commands just on the keyboard as well. Just want to point that out to you guys. So quick little recap on the original. Super compact, that's a plus. On casters, that's a plus. You can roll it in out of your shop. Super affordable to get into cutting with the CNC. And if you're on a super tight budget, that's definitely the way to go. Uh, the downside, single-sided gantry, not a big factor for me, but people have complained about that. No height control. Uh, once you start adding the XL table and the water table, the price starts getting a lot closer to this thing. 
and no Z height control and the Mach 3 software is a big thing for me. I really didn't like that software. Now let's get into this uh, pro table and talk about the pros on this thing. So the perks with this table is dual rails for the gantry, much more sturdy supported. It's got basically two XL tables with the water table all set up here on the pro model. It comes included in the price. You got Z height control and you got optional torch height control, which I have for this machine. Without the torch height control, you still have Z. It'll come down, touch off the piece, raise up a little bit, and for the pierce and then lower down for the cut. But if it travels along, if it bumps the metal, if there's warpage in the metal, it will automatically step up a tiny bit to cover that, but it no, won't know when to step down. The optional torch height control, which I have hooked up to my titanium plasma torch here, actually senses voltage and it will touch off, pierce, come down, cut, and it will vary the cut over warped metal and the torch will follow it varying on voltage. So that is a super nice option. It helps with consumables and it just makes really nice clean, clean cuts. So this part of the video, we're gonna cover cut speed and pierce times. Basically, I'm gonna post all that information over here when I go and look over some of my files. Uh, I just wanna let you guys know, I don't cut much half inch with it, I have. I cut a little bit of 3 8 with it. Not that often, I don't really work with that. I mostly work with quarter. 3 16th and eighth inch and a little bit thinner than eighth inch. It just kind of fits with my builds, what I'm doing. Uh, but I'm actually gonna be cutting a bunch of thin body work, really thin gauge metal. So in future Pinsgauer six by six videos where I'm building that mini Pinsgauer, I'll post some information as I start cutting more body panels and figure out what works well for me. Uh, what I'm using is the Titanium 45 Plasma Torch. It's worked really well. I've cut over maybe 500 feet of metal with it without any major problems at all. Only thing I found with that is Langmuir Systems claims that you should put uh, the ground clamp on, well, the work clamp, I should say, on the bottom of the water drain on the table. I found as the rusty slats happen, you don't get good grounds. And if you don't get a good ground, I think this is common for most plasmas that are pilot arc is that you have to, I found that if you clean up the work clamp and clip it right to your metal you're cutting, you get a much better start on all your plasma torch cuts. I had a few times where this thing would glitch out and just like scratch the metal basically with 15 amps and not a full 45. And I found it always came down to a ground clamp, either the contacts on it needed to be cleaned or the metal it was on was dirty. Again, if you clip it to the bottom of your water table, I found it doesn't ground out very well. So. Make sure to put your ground clamp on your plate of metal. Make a big difference on your starts if you're having bad starts where it just like tries to start but doesn't really do much. It goes on to the next hole. Uh, look at your clamp. So one other thing to mention, I learned this technique from a friend of mine that's had a CNC, I think it's a plasma cam table. And he basically would always run his torch at full bore and just various cut speeds. So that's what I do on this thing. Keep in mind, I'm not really cutting much sheet metal. If you are cutting sheet metal, you can probably dial it down to like 25 or 30 amps but everything I'm doing is eighth inch and above. So I run my thing at full bore 45 amps because the tip is rated for 45 amps and all I do is vary my cut speed. So if I'm cutting eighth inch, it's gonna be a much faster cut speed than if I'm cutting quarter inch. So that's basically what works for me. I have never actually hit the duty cycle on this thing anyways. If you actually had a really small duty cycle on your plasma, you might not wanna do that, but this thing does so well that it's never been a factor for me. So here's another tip with these tables. Basically, you get them in parts in a box and it's like putting together a really complex, awesome model because by the time you're done, you have a really precision CNC tool here. But it's definitely a complex kit to put together. Not impossible, just take your time with it and everything will go really smooth. But a friend of mine, Oliver Motorized, he has another YouTube channel, he's down in Oregon. He called me up the other day. He just bought a table maybe a month ago and he said, hey Mike, I'm having a problem. My holes are oblong. Do you have any idea what's going on? Something with my program, something with the table. I said, I know your problem. I can solve it for you in about a few minutes here. Check your couplers. So once you build these things, you have these little collar lock couplers for the screws. If they come loose on the motor or the screw, basically what will happen is you won't have precision cutting it will have a little bit of slop. So the motor will turn, but the shaft won't turn to drive the things in one of the axis. So I work on CNC equipment, a maintenance on them at my work. So I knew about these issues on really big CNC routers and machinery. So I had that problem happen on my original and this one is not a problem that's long-term. It's basically like, oh, I noticed the cut's not coming out right. You check your coupler, you tighten everything down again. Basically, if you get one of these out of the box, put it together, come back about a week later and double check all your couplers are tight, the little Allen keys, uh, because basically if they do come loose, you won't have precision cuts. 
and it takes about two minutes to solve the problem and I haven't had a problem again with this table for six months so it's been great. So that's just a little tip on if you own one of these tables, check your couplers on occasion. So I've had a lot of questions on what computer I'm running with this people want to know because they want to go out and get it. I don't recommend this computer at all. It's a HP Pavilion I got because my old Acer broke and the only reason I replaced it was because it stopped working. What I don't like about this computer is you close it down unplugged in my shop in sleep mode and a day or two later the battery is completely dead in it and it seems to be slow and always you have the little swirl going on the screen. I don't like it at all. It should be completely adequate to run this stuff but it's just not a very good computer. Enough griping about that. I was running the little mini super compact Acer. It was like five or six years old. It was a hand-me-down, super small screen. It ran all the stuff, no problem. It was a little hard to see when you're drawn up in Fusion 360, all the parts on a smaller screen, but it worked good. It could be unplugged. I could bring it down here, leave it in the shop for days on end, open it up and still have plenty of battery life. The reason I replaced it was basically I came out here one winter day and opened it up and it just wasn't working at all anymore. I tried to salvage some stuff on it, it would not come back on. So I had to replace it with this thing. I'm not that thrilled about it, but it works and does the job. I think any computer in the last five or six years old would probably work on these tables. I'll put a link below to Langmuir website and from there you should be able to find some specs on what kind of operating system you need for the software. And also, don't forget, if you use the Mike Faceva promo code, it'll save you 100 bucks on either these original table or the pro model. So that's a good little tip there. Save you 100 bucks is pretty good. All right, about time to wrap up the video, but I have a few more words I want to put out there. Basically, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the little overlay of video I put on here of some of the stuff I've cut over the last year on my CNC tables. I've been super happy about it. It's a complete game changer when it comes to a home shop and what you can do. I feel the pro model you could actually start a side business with and actually start manufacturing parts. I felt the original was just a little too much tinkering around with the height control to really be something more of like a side business. It was more of just like I want to cut parts for myself in my shop. The pro table, like I said, is something I think you can actually start manufacturing parts for as a side business. And it's just the bigger capacity and all that's just gonna be a lot better. It's more of just to start it and let it run. The other one felt like the original took a little bit more tinkering to get nice precision parts cut out of it. Final note on this, if you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Go back and check out my other videos because a lot of my videos I'm using these tables in, you're gonna be able to see what you can do with them. Another thing is I haven't covered much in Fusion 360 on drawing parts in here. I never drew parts prior to owning one of these tables, so that was new to me. It was a steep learning curve, but it took me about two weeks of practicing when I got an hour here, an hour there, and I found a few tutorial videos that were helpful. I would like to do a little tutorial series on simple drawing in 2D for CNC plasma tables probably be a three or four part series and it would cover from basically drawing parts, getting around on the program, saving files, cut paths, speeds, and finishing cutting parts. So basically that's what a video series is gonna be about. I need to figure out a good way to screen capture it because me talking here, you guys aren't gonna see what's going on the screen. It's gonna be a little bit of a nightmare I see editing wise by getting good video of the screen while I'm talking and just trying to fit all that stuff together. But I really want to share that with you guys because I knew nothing about it and I thought, well, if I order this first CNC table and I can't figure it out, it's going to be a boat anchor. I was a little worried about that, but I figured it out and I'm sure you guys can too. It just takes a little bit of time. I'm not a master by any means of Fusion 360. That program is unbelievably big and powerful. I use maybe 15% of it. I wish there was a simple drawing program that utilized only like 2D drawing for this kind of stuff would make it a world difference, but I can show you guys probably how to navigate around that program. And within a short amount of time with practice, you can figure it out too. So keep an eye out for that series. I'm hoping to start building that and getting that up within the next month or so. All right, you guys, until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.